How's everyone doing today? We're having a great time at the expo. Yay! Yay! All right, well, I want to I start by thanking Orly Amor. I'm not sure if some of you guys uh, got a chance to meet her, but she's the president of the Holistic Chamber of Commerce, and this whole thing happened because of the hard work that she was doing, and Kalia as well. I mean, behind the scenes, Kalia was working it was an awesome event. We saw a lot of people today, and most importantly, everything, 100% of the proceeds went to charity. Amazing charities. We had uh, the Chris Candy Foundation, um, and Joe Candy was here. We had um, the Happy Hearts Foundation of Petra and Kova. We had uh, Viva Dresher. We had Wellness in the Schools, which is something that is very dear to my heart, which is an amazing children's charity in the, school, in the, uh, in the city here. And the whole purpose of uh, Wellness in, in the Schools is to get all this processed crap food out of the schools, this is what our kids are eating every single day. And if we're gonna make changes in, in our communities, in our states, in our nation, in this world, we've gotta start with the kids. It's the most important thing. Amen. And that's one of the reasons why I started hey, the Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. No, and everyone deserves a, a round of applause for that. But um, I started with the Holistic Chamber of Commerce and now sit on the advisory board for that reason. I'm extremely passionate about helping people and it's an amazing group of people. We get together once a month, it's usually the third Wednesday um, uh, of, of the month, and it's just great networking, and the whole purpose is to bring health, to bring all these things that you saw here to people on a regular basis. We need more of it. You don't have to be in the health profession to be um, attending these specific meetings, because it's just great for everyone. So I encourage all of you guys to check it out. Give me some really cool people there, okay? So um, I want to start by saying that as of this morning, I wasn't going to be giving this talk tonight. Um, I want to tell you a little story. This past Saturday, I was actually running in Central Park. I was training for the marathon this coming Sunday, which I know all us New Yorkers are very excited about. And about eight and a half miles, and I can say I'm actually running for Wellness in the Schools as well, the charity that I mentioned before, um, which again is a charity true to my heart. So I'm about eight and a half miles into my run, and I always carry my phone on me, you know, in my pocket. I had this cool little band that my wife got for me for the marathon that will hold it tight. And, um, <laughs> good for and eight and a half miles into it, I started getting these texts from both my brothers. And at first, me and my middle brother were always kind of texting back and forth. So he, I get two texts from him, or a missed call from him. I look at the phone as I'm running, because I always want to make sure Chelsea's okay with our you know, five-month baby as well. Um, so I want to make sure that you know, there's anything she needs, I can give him right away. And so my brother sends me these two texts and a missed call. And I look at it, and I, I didn't think it was anything serious. So what I do, I put the camera on, I take like a crazy picture like that, I text it to him and I put it back in my pocket and I keep running because he knows I'm crazy like that and when I'm running, you know, I'm out there doing something like that. So um, I run another mile or so and I just pull my phone out again and I see about 10 texts from both of my brothers, my older brother and my middle brother. It says, emergency, call now. I knew something was wrong. And when you get something like that, and I know, you know we all know people in our lives when we've gotten that, that type of a text or that call, your heart literally sinks into your stomach. And all of a sudden, everything goes blurry, and you don't know what's going on. You're in that kind of like immediate present mode of you know, something's wrong. And innately, I knew it was my dad. So I called my brother and found out that my parents were driving from Vermont, where they live, to um, Newtown, Connecticut, my brother lived in there going to my nephew's birthday party. And they're on 84 East, and you know, looking back now, I thank God that they were on 84 East. My dad is driving with my mom in the passenger seat, and they're in the HOV lane, and my dad passes out at the wheel. And all of a sudden, the car starts veering like this. And my mom, you know, realizes just looking up that the car's veering, she looks over and sees my dad passed out at the wheel. And as this, I mean, you can imagine how quickly this all appears, but it's also one of those slow motion things. And as it happens, the car veers up onto the concrete divider, comes back down. As it does that, my mom takes my dad's foot off of the accelerator. While she's doing that with one arm, her other arm, like a football move, does a stiff arm to the brake, stops the brake. The car comes back down, the car comes back up again, comes back down. As it's doing that, she pulls the key out of the ignition. Someone said today, I was telling a story to you that, wow, oh, it's amazing, I never would have thought to do that. But no, no one thinks to do that. When things like this happen, it's so fast, it's innate. It's your body's self-defense kicking in. It's amazing how we all have that amazing innate intelligence within us, it's built within us. It's the same power that heals us. It happens automatically. The car comes to a stop, and she looks over and sees my dad, and his eyes are closed, she thinks he's dead. And 
will never forget the call. I had my mom fall and crying and say, hey, and I've seen her emotional, but I've never like this before, and she thought my dad had left us. I think he was passed out for two minutes, and he comes through, and then literally starts sweating profusely, nonstop. And my mom's thinking he's having a heart attack or a stroke, she doesn't know what to do. She starts calling 911, he passes out again. 18 minutes later, 84 East, the ambulance comes. You can imagine. Think about 18 minutes from now. Imagine how slow that is when your loved one is there and you think that they've left us. Was he passed out for the time? He passed out for two minutes, um, came through, started sweating profusely, and then he passed out again. And the second time he passed out, I'm not sure how long it was. Then he came back out of it, started coming to. Um, long story short, the ambulance comes and um, you know, take them to the hospital now there in Hartford, Connecticut. And the crazy thing about this whole thing is my wife and uh, I went out to Hartford on Monday to see him, and we pull into a parking spot in the hospital, and what's the car right next to me? It's my dad's and my mom's car. And I scratch on the car. <laughs> it was incredible. So we get to the hospital, they do all this different type of testing, and at first they look into the heart. That's you know the common sense, you know, something might happen in the heart, you do an EKG, an ECG, everything is normal. They do a CAT scan of the heart, everything was normal. Then they do a CAT scan of the brain. After the CAT scan of the brain, everything was fine with the brain. Then we learned that my dad was having some black stools, and you know, being the Italian father that he is, of course, he didn't say anything, and I know that's where it came. Um, so what happened was is um, long story short, they did uh, an EKG and they found something in his esophagus, and it was, it was a little tumor and a little cyst. And um, we found out that it was a over tumor. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you all this is that when this happens with your family members, it's amazing how everything else is and health is our most important asset. It's the most important asset that we have. And the good news is that we met with a, a doctor today, and it seems like that we did catch this thing early on, this can be treatable, um, which is the good news. And when the doctor uh, was talking to us, he says the cause was acid. And here I am wearing my shirt, get off your acid, which is the launch of our new company today. And it all kind of came together. Um, and the cool thing is that my dad is ready to get on the greens. He started the greens product at Renty Shea, he started on the minerals. And uh, the road ahead, I think, is going to look pretty good. Right? The reason why we're talking about this right now is this is something that we all deal with in our lives. It's, it's a pretty basic thing how often this thing happens. So what I want to get into is how important this alkaline acid diet is. And it's a number that not a lot of us are, are talking about. You know, we all hear about your temperature, you need to record that, but doctors aren't talking about the pH balance of your body. It is the most important, it is the most important number of the body that we all have to watch. All right, so that's what we're we'll talking about today. So we're gonna get through some of the slides. I'm just gonna go through this first one rather quickly. This is stuff that we're gonna be covering. So it's no important that our eating habits have caused a bad effect on everything in this country. All right, the combination of declining health and rising healthcare costs is pushing many to a dangerous breaking point. All right, so this is what I was talking about. If you ask people what's the most important asset, 43% from a Gallup poll say health is the most important thing in our lives, all right? When we look at an actual poll in terms of how we rate in terms of the world in health and wellness, the United States is a shocking 72. I can't even name 72 countries ahead of us. <laughs> it's crazy. Here we are, the most technologically advanced society in this world, and we're ranked 72. We make up 5% of the world's population. We spend 50% of all the money in the world in medical care, and we're still that number. There's something wrong with that picture. All right? The number is $2.6 trillion, that's one-fifth of our GDP. When we break that down, and by the way, there it is, number one out of all the countries. Right? When we break that down, that turns out to be about $8,000 a person. Can you imagine if all of us were given $8,000 a year and say, use this for your health? And we start using that for our organic food, and for our gyms, and for our chiropractors, and for all these things that you see out here today, there would definitely be a lot less disease to treat. Or if you just said, Hey, if you make yourself healthy, you can, like train and you do, you eat this and you do that, we could be eight grand at the end of the year. You gotta prove it. I agree. Yeah. I, I think it's a phenomenal nice model. Unfortunately, we're not, unfortunately we're not running the, the, the country, but I think that that would definitely be a, a much different strategy that would work. But I don't think the insurance company would be happy about that. <laughs> 
So here it is, the death rates, and there we are. All right, the top 16, and the United States dead last amongst all developed nations at number 17. All right, exactly what we're talking about. So we're living longer than ever. All right, and back in uh, 1900, one in six were living to 85. All right, now our average lifespan is 84.3, so 84 years. But just because we're living longer doesn't mean that we're healthy. All right, it's about the quality of the years, not the quantity of the years. All right, and that's the most important thing. So it's all the things that we decide to do today. What we have to understand is that the quality of the choices that we make every single day is going to determine not just how healthy you are, but how we age. And we want to get there healthy so we can be around with our family, so we can enjoy the quality of life that we all deserve, and you guys deserve it. All right, but the things that we do and the choices that we make that might not seem significant, they add up. And it's not those big, big things that we all kind of think about. It's the little things that build build and build, but those little things over time become a huge geometric change. But all of a sudden, we hear about cancer, all of a sudden we have a heart attack. Those things don't happen overnight. They take time to develop. So, top seven deadly diseases that could be significantly reduced with changes in diet. Heart disease, stroke, respiratory cancers, colon and rectum cancers, diabetes, breast cancer, stomach cancer. Most of those can be affected by what we put into our bodies. Again, the quality of the choices are going to make a huge impact on what happens to us as we age and with those seven specific things. Every 90 seconds, someone suffers from a heart attack. So think about how many people it is since we started this lecture here. Okay? In that same amount of time, two people will have strokes. One will die of cardiovascular disease. Heart disease, number one cause of death in this country. What's the first symptom of heart disease? You can tell me. Either. Shoulder pain? You guess, but no. Anyone else? Shortness of breath. Death. 50% of people. <laughs> Heart attack. That's it. We all have hear the stories. Whether it's a friend or family member, you know, Joe, he was 50 years old and just dropped out of a heart attack. Was poor old Joe really healthy? These things do not happen like that. Sickness takes time to develop, and it's the last thing that comes. Just like a toothache. Anyone ever wake up with a toothache? All right, what happens the day before? The tooth felt fine. Was that tooth really healthy? Same thing with the heart. Sickness takes time to develop. We can't judge our health based on how we feel. By that time, sometimes it's too late. Make sense? Okay. So cancer, we already talked about that. What are the odds? So if you're a male, statistically shows one in two have a chance of getting cancer. Women got a little bit better, one out of three. I think this is reason enough that we gotta start to change what we do, how we do it, and most importantly, not just the foods which we're gonna talk about, but the stress levels that we all endure. Because stress literally outweighs the food a million times to one. All right? We talk a lot about the food and the quality of the foods, but we have to deal with the stress and the balance in our lives, balancing the work and the family life. Okay? Obesity, again. You know, we talk about kids, one in three children are obese, all right? Why is this happening? If you look at our country compared to most other, you know, developed nations in the world, it's much different. You know, this, this stat is changing at an alarming rate. And again, this is all based on the choices that we're gonna make, all right? Since 1978, adult obesity has increased 139%. That's not a long amount of time for that huge of an increase. Does that say 69% of adults are, are overweight? Percent. But not obese, but overweight. Overweight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Child obesity has risen 200%. It's even higher. Adolescent obesity, 300%. In 2012, 40 billion was spent on this, and to no avail. All right. Same thing with children. With these cute little kids. It's affecting them even more so than it's affecting the adults. One in three children are overweight, and this is why wellness in the schools, the WIS program, is something we should all look into supporting because again, we've got to get into the schools. That's where all this processed foods are happening. We can control at home, but what happens when they leave? And we don't have that control. It's that important. We've got to help make the changes. We've got to get active with that. Kids are consuming a diet with all these different types of processed foods. Children as young as eight are experiencing onset diabetes that adults get. That's crazy, guys. Crazy. At that age, that our kids should be getting what adults get, and that adults should even be getting. All right? Diabetes is a reason why they call it diabetes. Poor diet is also linked to behavioral problems such as ADD. Okay, how many kids are on Ritalin and all these different types of psychotropic drugs because of these specific types of ADD issues? 
right? A lot of doctors will say it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. It's not. You gotta look at other causes. You cannot show me one chemical imbalance in the brain that causes ADD. Right? Look at that child. Look at their nerve system. Is there stress in their nerve system? Are they hyper irritated? Are they consuming massive amounts of sugar? We'll talk about sugar in a few minutes. So even those of us not in immediate danger still face an uphill battle. Right? Those are the ones that we think that we're healthy and doing all the right things. Let's review the shopping trends. Chronic exhaustion. Adults need seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Chelsea, how do you feel about that one? <laughs> Five month old baby, that's not really happening these days, everyone, but she's doing a phenomenal job. An incredible 83% of adults don't get the night of sleep that they need. Right? Stress and anxiety, top reasons as well. Long-term sleep deprivation is linked to weight gains. So anyone looking to lose weight, get some more sleep, drink some more water. It's a good way to start melting off the pounds, and it, trust me, it helps. When your body goes more than three hours a night without sleeping, your um, adrenal gland, which is your stress gland, goes into an automatic stress response that happens for three weeks. So every three to four hours you go um, without, so let's say you go through a night and you get three to four hours of sleep, and that's it, nothing more than that, your body will start secreting all these stress hormones it's going to set you into a stress response for three to four weeks. Imagine how many nights that's happened. We wonder why your bodies are changing so much internally. Studies show that staying up late makes people behave as though they have a 0.05 blood alcohol level. 0.08 is legally intoxicated. How many drunk drivers are out there just from being tired? Crazy, right? <laughs> so in search of energy, millions of people reaching for the caffeine boost. I've had this topic all day today. People coming over, having the green shots and with their coffee. Again, not about deprivation, about moderation. If you're gonna have a coffee, no problem. Put some coconut oil into it. Have a glass of water. Don't get like the super mumbo jumbo size of, of coffee. You know, instead of putting milk in it, into it, which is bad, dairy is clogging, why not put some coconut oil into it? Or so, some almond uh, milk or some coconut milk. Things that are gonna basically be a little bit better on your body, not as much acid going into the body. And if you are gonna have the coffee, again, have something healthy before you have that coffee. Anything that you can put help What's that? Is milk an acid? Milk is highly acidic. We're going to talk about that. How about bit. you add some alkalizers? Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Um, I think one of the best things, because coconut oil tastes good, it adds, enhances the flavor. It's got the same pH as our blood, 7.365. You add a little tablespoon of coconut oil, you're going to neutralize a good portion of the acid in the coffee. Okay? But your mineral salts are going to be much better. Mineral salts will be better. Which Absolutely. Is, which is okay. what I just did. Okay. Um, yeah, and there's, there's different strategies to do it. You just gotta find what works for you. You know, but again, even if you're not gonna be doing those specific things, have a big glass of lemon water if you're gonna have You know, something that will help the body neutralize the acid when it goes into the system. All right, there's some of my clients like, I'm not giving up coffee. I'm like, no problem. I'm not here to tell you to do that. What I'm here to help you do is allow your body to deal with the effects that that coffee's gonna have on your body. All right, you have coffee every single day. I always use this uh, example. If you're gonna have spinach every single day for 60 days and you stop eating spinach, what's gonna happen to your body? Nothing. You do coffee for 60 days and you stop your coffee, what happens? I need my coffee. I need my fix. Give it to me. And seriously, yeah, right, they right, get, mom? They get, they get withdrawal symptoms. Totally. And so anyone that tells me coffee is healthy, any study in the Times that tells me that, okay, have that person take coffee for 60 days and come to my office. I wanna see how he does. Okay? Coffee going in is a liver suppressor. Coffee coming in this way is a liver enhancer. Right. So coffee animals are open. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> All right, so sitting is a new smoking as we sit here. All right, we gotta get up and we gotta move. This is a huge problem. It's causing so many issues with our spine. I'm seeing 10 year olds get degeneration in their L5 vertebrae because of sitting all day long. Then they put their book bags on that weigh 40 pounds and it's a repetitive thing that happens over and over and over. Literally, people are, are getting sick because of the amount of time that we're sitting. And we actually see this that. We're sedentary, three-fifths of our waking hours, four-fifths, four out of five of us don't get the recommended amount of exercise each week. What are we doing instead? We're watching five hours of TV a day. Every hour we spend watching TV cuts 22 minutes from our lifespan. All the research is down there, guys. This is not my opinion. This is all in the research. To put this in perspective, smokers shorten their lives about 11 minutes per cigarette. So if you smoke, you have a better lifespan than you do if you sit for that amount of period. That's insane. That's great. Insane. Yeah, sit and smoke. All right. So missing link, and this is what I've been talking about all day today. 
pH balance in our blood. So, the two words are acid and alkaline. Who's heard of those words before? Wow, <laughs> love it. <laughs> well, you're gonna hear more about it right now because this is really one of the most important things. Acidity and alkaline describes a chemical property. The pH scale measures how acidic or alkaline a substance is. So the scale goes from zero to 14. Zero, good. Zero is pure acid, 14 is pure alkalinity, seven is neutral. So we want our blood to be slightly alkaline, okay? And the number there is 7.365. Easy way for us to remember that number, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We need to be alkaline. Okay? That helps. So everything in nature depends on proper pH balance. So this is just an example. We'll get to the how important this is in the body in a second. But when you look at the oceans throughout the world, which is having a big, big, big devastating effect, we all know that fish you cannot find without PCBs, dioxins, mercury. It's kind of tragic that this is what's happening to our environment. But oceans have a pH of 8.2. Because of all the carbon dioxide in the environment, which, by the way, is the most acidic component that there is. The carbon dioxide in your body that we trap because we don't breathe enough is making us sicker. So if you want the quickest way to get alkaline, and it's free, breathe more. Okay? So the atmospheric, uh, atmosphere is lowered it to 8.1. As a result, the coral reef reefs in the Great Barrier Reef are dying at unprecedented rates. All right, these are pictures from the actual reef. Same thing with the soil. When you look at the soil, because of all the pesticides, all the GMOs, same exact thing is happening. You need the soil to be tightly regulated at a specific pH for those crops to grow the way that they need to, to get the most out of the nutrition. If that soil is tainted by GMOs or acid rain or anything like that, it's gonna change the pH level of the, of the soil. And then the plants growing out of that are gonna be affected, okay? And as a result of that, that things happen. So just like we have a temperature of 98.6 degrees, that needs to be tightly regulated. If that temperature gets too high or too low, what happens to us? Don't function. Kill you. Exactly, exactly, all right? Same thing with your pH. So a number that a lot of our doctors aren't talking about is that 7.365 number. And I'm gonna tell you, it's even more important than your temperature. It's a number that we've gotta to start to regulate, we've gotta to start to keep track of it, all right? And it's gotta be regulated at 7.35. Now, when you're looking at your saliva or your urine, that's something that you can measure with pH trips. That's gonna fluctuate and change from day to day based on what you're doing. If I have something acidic, it's gonna lower my pH. If I have something alkaline, it's gonna increase the pH. So that's a good way to look and measure how you're doing from day to day. But your blood is always going to be a 7.365, and it's going to affect almost every single function of your body. Excess acid in our diets is harmful to our health. So we're talking about this, the minerals, the most important thing. 80% of us are deficient in magnesium. I submit to you that the number is higher. When we're deficient in magnesium, what's the first symptom of that? Muscle tightness. Muscle cramps, spasm. Anyone familiar with those things? Are. <laughs> <laughs> it's been estimated that a modern acid diet robs our skeleton of almost half its calcium over 20 years. So basically, when your body is not getting the minerals that it needs, it's going to start to pull from the bones. The number one source of osteoporosis increased acidity in the blood. All right. So if you want to change anyone that you know has osteoporosis, get them some good, healthy minerals. That's going to give them a nice buffering system and allow the body to neutralize all the acid, so it doesn't have to drain its own resources. Right? The more we drain our resources, the body's going to get into more sickness, more unhealthiness. Okay? We're always striving to maintain a critical balance. We have a system of buffers. So again, your body breathes. It takes in oxygen. It gets out CO2. CO2 gas is 120 times more acidic than any other acid in your body. Take the HCL in your stomach, the uric acid in your urine, the lactic acid in your muscles. The carbon dioxide gas is 120 times more acidic. So again, if we're not breathing, we're trapping this in. And that's making our body into a overly acidic situation. And again, it's stress. Stress is one of the big causes. Not just chemical stress from foods, but emotional stress. When we get stressed, what do we do? Fight, flight, and we freeze. Ever see a deer when it recognizes you? What does it do? It stops like that, all right? And it traps all of that carbon dioxide gas into the body. So one thing we've got to do is start to breathe. There's a ratio called 1, 4, 2. I learned this at Tony Robbins. One is the inhalation. Four is you holding that breath. Two is the exhalation. So you can do that in any ratio. It could be two, 10, four. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe in, hold it, and 
breathe out. You do that 10 repetitions three times a day, you see your energy change like that. All right, so we gotta breathe more. Our kidneys excrete acids out, so again, you can measure your pH by your urine, and that's something that will fluctuate based on what you're doing, but it's a little more accurate than the saliva. All right, and again, sweating. So perspiration, respiration, defecation, urination, four ways that the body gets the acids out. So sweating, moving, you know, running, elliptical machine, infrared sauna, these are all ways that the body's gonna get these acids out. Drinking a lot of water is very important as well. Acidic life has been linked to, I'm just gonna throw all these out there. We've been talking a lot about all of these, but you can see how having an acid life affects so many different conditions that so many people have on a regular basis, okay? Acidosis, excess acid levels can lead to devastating health consequences. So, research shows that too acidic cuts off blood flow in these small arteries, which has a negative effect on overall circulation. It's called high blood pressure. Anyone know anyone with high blood pressure? Change their diet, your blood pressure will change. I saw that little upload of Jay over there. <laughs> Strongly linked to impaired immune function. Know anyone who gets sick often? All right? Bacteria, yeast, viruses, mold, they cannot survive in an alkaline environment. Right? They thrive in an anaerobic environment, in an acidic environment. They, they feed off of these things like sugar, that is acid. All right? So if you want to help the body get its immune system stronger, you got to you have to start to do all these different things to alkalize the body all right? and get these toxins out. When you get the body into a more alkaline state, these things are not going to be able to, to, to flourish. Right? Things like colds and the typical flus that you're seeing all about the flu shots right now, they're not going to happen as often as, as people think that they should. You don't need a flu shot. You just need to get your terrain a little bit more invigorated and get it a little bit more healthy by alkalizing. So these are typical types of uh, alkaline foods for anyone not familiar with. What is alkaline? Um, you have your beetroot, parsley, wheatgrass, celery, kale, sprouts, spinach, all staples. That should be 70, 80 percent of what you do during the day. So have you eaten your veggies today? Who's eating their veggies today? All right, pretty good crowd here. A recent U.S. government shows that. Out of 21,000 people surveyed, none ate the recommended daily <laughs> average of basic nutrients. Five to nine servings is what we're striving for. On average, only 8% of us eat the recommended amount of fruit, 6% eat the recommended amount of vegetables. There's an issue with that, guys. There's an issue with that nine servings, too. How so? Well, I don't know where they get that idea that you need to eat that many times a day. Well, it's the quality of the nutrition. That's good. It's the quality, okay? But five to nine, all right? But again, this is what we're talking about. You want five to nine servings, but when we talk about this, are we really getting the amount based on the food that we're eating? So we'll talk about that in a second. So the standard American diet, which is also called the SAD diet, Western diet, is definitely the difference between life and death. So 40% of cancer deaths could be prevented by a nutritious diet. This is research, all right? Everything's down there. If any of you guys want the articles or sources, I have those for you. All right, it could be prevented by a nutritious diet, exercise, and refraining from smoking. 80% of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes could be prevented. Pretty crazy. French fries are the vegetables Americans eat most. French. 25%. Sweet. Uh, there we go. So, we're eating worse than we've ever eaten before. Well, what do they fry those things in? Anyway? Well, that's. That's a whole other story. That's making it even worse. All right, but again, the whole processed food, fast food industry is literally clogging our arteries, and it's not just us, but it's our kids. So, massive amounts of sugar. Everyone who's heard my story knows that I was addicted to sugar for a good portion of my life, and it was something that was really tough for me to get over. Deprivation never worked. My willpower got me two weeks, a month, two months, and I was back to my old habits by default. It's so funny, I don't have the picture here, but there's a picture of me um, reading the book, The Sugar Blues. Anyone know that book? Yeah, awesome book. If you read it, you'll stop eating sugar, except for me. I have a book, Sugar Blues, in my hand, and I write it, a box of Lucky Charms. My brother, to this still day, will call me Sugar Blues, Tony. He's like, how's it going, there, Sugar Blues? Pretty crazy. So, when we look at the sugar, all right, the biggest acid by far. Sugar is acid, and acid is glue. Sugar feeds bad things. Cancer, bacteria, viruses. Art gave me an amazing stat. 50 times, you know, they, they go after sugar more than regular food. Cancer. Yeah, Cancer. exactly. All right, adults, a whopping 22 teaspoons a day. Children, 32 teaspoons a day. What are we feeding our kids, everybody? Wow. All right, we call it a treat. Here, have a donut, it's a treat. 
not a tree. We've got to be careful of the language we use. Language creates meaning, meaning creates emotion, and it's not making our kids healthier. Right? If you're going to give them a um, just because it's but again, one bagel, the hidden sugars we gotta look at. One bagel equals 11 teaspoons of sugar. Alright, so when you have a bagel, you're drinking a Coke. One can of soda, 11 teaspoons of sugar. Alright, and there you go. There's a, one school where they talk about kids drinking four to five ounce sodas a day at school. Welcome to the schools, everybody. Alright, we're gonna just pass some of this stuff. Protein is a whole other topic, which is important because people think that we need a certain amount of protein, they need, you need meat. Read the China study. All I'm going to just paraphrase what the China study shows is that anything above 10 grams of protein increased the likelihood of stroke, cardiovascular disease, and heart disease. When you took the same amount in plant proteins, it was an inverse relationship. All, right? all those things decreased. You get all the protein that you need if you want to go towards a variable. I'm not telling you not to eat meat. That's not the point of this. If you want to go towards a vegetarian style diet, you are going to get the amount of protein that you need. There's plenty of protein. There's 40% protein in kale. You have 44% in spinach, you're going to get plenty of protein in that. Um, fish, again, another quality source of protein. And you can just see here, based on the mortality rate, what happens with processed meat, what happens with the legumes and the vegetables. Plant protein is considered superior by many experts. Again, that's the protein that you're looking at, so you get plenty of the proteins that you need. All right, and by the way, when you look at common sense wise, how much protein do we really need? The average American, they say, needs about 50 to 70 grams. They get that based on what the average American consumes. In Europe, it's something like 18 to 22. If you look at breast milk, and our baby is a testament to this. He's five months, and he is one of the biggest babies I've seen. And it doesn't come from me, and it doesn't come from my wife. So anyway, we, are, we are not big people. But he's a, a monstrous boy. In mother's milk, three to five percent protein. Very tiny. And that's when children grow the most. At any age. All right? So we don't need as much as you think. Dairy, who was asking about dairy, Joyce? All right, does not do a body good. And this is shocking to a lot of people. It was to me at first. I wish I had these studies uh, for my mom when I was growing up. We're gonna give it to her when she made me drink milk every single night. You know, it's wild. But again, there's a lot of resistance. So just be open to this. This is not my opinion. This is the research. Dairy, all right, men who have it, two plus servings of dairy a day have a 60% increased risk of prostate cancer. 30 million American women suffer from osteoporosis. Yet the average woman in the U.S. drinks two pounds of milk. If milk really did what it says it's going to do, it's going to increase bone density, and we're going to get stronger bones from that, you wouldn't see that standard here. Okay. We consume the most dairy in the world, and we have the highest rate of osteoporosis. Yes? Is it from uh, the gra raw grass-fed also count? This, the grass fed? Th it happens with grass fed as well because of the high sugar content, but what we're talking about here is standard where it's also filled with growth hormones, antibiotics, and other things. So again, you know, um, you're not legally allowed to have it, but raw milk is actually quite healthy. Mm -hmm. Coconut you know, and milk in your, in your cereal. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As like, I'm saying, there is a major difference between processed process, hormones, antibiotics, all those different things that are given to these cows to make them produce much more. All right, but you move that aside, um, milk by itself. We weren't designed to have cow's milk. A cow grows 1,500 pounds in three years. How much did we grow in three years? It's for babies. Completely different hormones, all right? So we were designed to have breast milk, okay? Today's milk is shot with hormones and chemical residues, so we were just talking about that. So painkillers, pesticides, antibiotics, 18% of dairy cows have been injected with artificial growth hormones. It's pretty crazy. All right? It takes 10 pounds of milk to make cheese. So you think cheese, you're getting away with it. Cheese, it's just magnified much worse. Okay? Harvard study tested Mongolian children before and after drinking American milk for one month. Notice the climb in their hormone levels. One month of drinking American milk. You really want your kids drinking this. The number one allergy in children, milk, dairy, from a cow. All right? There's the sugar, not to mention the casein in milk, which is 87% of milk, which is a protein that is linked to breast cancer in women. A lot of bad things about it. Bye, Nami. See ya. You guys gonna like that little joke? <laughs> Get it? Can you imagine going into a film and seeing someone actually doing that to like a cow? Why you got it? Sorry, you're a rare, you're a rare kind. Um, all right, so we're gonna get into some digestive stuff. One in four Americans suffer from bowel problems. Where does most of this acidity take place in our body? It's the digestive system. Probably one of the most important systems of the body. 
80% of your immune system resides in your digestive system. We've got to clean it out. The average American has 10 to 15 pounds of impacted fecal matter. All right, this is why I think colonics are so important for us. Not the most fun thing for some people to go through, but colonics are great because it gets out the stuff out of the large intestine. If you want to get the stuff out of the small intestine, there's different types of cleanses. Um, you can do like a magnesium oxide salt flush, which basically has a pH of 10.0, and that's too alkaline. We talked about that already. You don't want it too alkaline, so when that comes into the body, the body starts squirting out water from the small intestines to neutralize that acid. Water neutralizes acid, that's why we gotta drink more water. So when it does that, it's gonna flush out all that small little poop. Is it neutralizing the alkalinity when you do the It's neutralizing, yeah, because 10, 10 point is way too high if you get sick from that. So it's bringing the, the, uh, the neutralization of it down. So it's taking the 10 point and it's flooding it to get it out of system faster, but it's also bringing the pH down. And then that cleans the system out? Cleans your system out. Yeah, you buy the toilet for six hours if you're gonna do that. And if anyone ever wants to do a soft flush, I can give them the right way to do it. There's a, an easy way to kind of ease into it, but then there's a real soft flush after the big holidays, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, things like that. Not a bad idea to do. Just listen, you have to have fun on all these points are you. Yeah, exactly. All right, acidic foods create inflammation. So we all hear about chronic inflammation. Inflammation is so bad. This is why we make the three fatty acids are so important. Why is inflammation bad? Why is it created? It's created from over acid, increased acidity in the digestive tract. Okay. So, what can we do to get the proper nutrition? Don't count on your doctor for advice. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors only receive 19 hours of nutrition classes, yet all these patients coming into me, you know, with a bag of vitamins, synthetic vitamins. They're taking D2, not D3. We're told to take their D3, their D on empty stomach when it's a fat-soluble vitamin. You need to have D with fat. That's just one example, but uh, you need to go to someone who's really gonna give you the true advice that knows about healthy eating, and knows about you know raw foods and things like that that can give you the right way to do it. Less is more. We don't want to supplement if we don't have to, but there are a few things that you should be supplementing with. The very three at least I recommend everybody supplements with is a good probiotic, vitamin D3, and omega-3 fatty acid. Those are the three things the research shows that we are all deficient in. We can't get it in the food, so we have to supplement from it. Magnesium. Absolutely. Absolutely. 80% of us are deficient in. Yeah, but the, the three like staple ones of that, but I, I think we should all have daily greens and a, um, a form of mineral salt as well. Absolutely. So what should our diets look like? First and foremost, water. All right. Who drinks less than two liters of water a day? Okay, you're chronically dehydrated. All right. Average person loses about two and a half liters of water a day. I'm not talking from exercising, just walking, moving, sleeping, eating, breathing. Breathing. So if we're not doing at least two and a half liters of water a day, then we're going to be dehydrated. Right? What happens when a plant, a plant starts to wilt? What's the first thing that comes to our mind? Water. It's the same thing with our bodies. Okay? We want some good healthy oils and fats, coconut oil, avocados, chia seeds, all good examples of that. This is a my plate example. I like to expand on that. I think half of this plate should be with uh, the two biggest meals a day, a big healthy rainbow salad. You know, high water content, you know, Red peppers, cucumbers, celery, um, you know, flax oil. You know, it's really jazzed up. Squeeze some fresh lemon into it, and that should be half of it. The other half, you can have some small protein, about the size of your fist. I recommend more of a plant-based or fish-based protein. If you want to have meat, go for it. But again, if you are going to have the meat, make sure that you are um, having a lot of high water content foods to help you neutralize all the acids in the meat. Okay? All right, we're going to fly through this a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about that. So again, this is talking about soil depletion, right? Even when you're um, eating healthy organic foods, 85% of the minerals are depleted in the soil. Acid rain, all right? So again, this is why supplementation in this day and age, it's become more of a necessity. I hate to say it, you know, for years I hated taking supplements, but now you have to. Just know the right ones to take. If anyone has any questions about what they should be doing, I'd be happy to look at what they have on their concerns. All right, the sorry state of our produce leaves us having to eat an impossible amount. This is what I'm talking about. Right now, we have to eat eight oranges to get the same amount of vitamin A as our grandparents got from one orange. We're talking 62 in the past 100 years, okay? And that takes 60 servings of spinach to get the same amount of iron that just one serving got in 1948. Wheat grown 100 years ago had twice as much protein as modern varieties. The wheat crop has changed. It's a whole other topic. Since 1950, the calcium in our broccoli dropped from 130 milligrams to 48. When Papa had to eat 60 cans of spinach, 
She'd be still waiting for her hero to save her, guys. So, even if you're taking supplements, most aren't being absorbed correctly. So, all I want to say about this is avoid the tablets. All right? If you have a fully functioning digestive system and it's working 100%, which none of us have, and you take a tablet, research shows you're getting 32% absorption. So, when I think of things, it's, it's good, better, best. So, if you're talking about tablets, there's capsules, and then there's the powder form of the vitamin. Tablets get the least absorption. Capsules, much better, about 50% absorption. But when you look to more of a powdered form, much better. These are things that we were showcasing upstairs. You mix it with water, it bypasses your digestive system, goes right into your blood system, you get about a 98% absorption rate, and it's instant access to what you need. It gets right into your system, the minerals, the greens, whatever it is. Okay. Real foods are your best source, so we are just talking about that. So, plant-based diet. All right, that's really what we want to be talking about. Research shows that people who consume eight or more servings of vegetables and low sugar fruits eat a day 22% less likely to die from heart disease than those who consume three or two servings. So these stats, I think, should kind of show us how important this really is, guys. Eat a wide variety of plant sources for optimal nutrition, weight loss, and pH balance. Here are some examples of some of the most powerful alkaline superfoods. All right, on the point one out of this, wheatgrass. If you want to do one thing that will change your life, if you do one wheatgrass shot every day, I'm telling you, it is the most powerful food on the planet. All right, people ask, what about chlorella? Chlorella has a lot of chlorophyll as well, but if I'm going to choose between a uh, marine-based plant or a main, you know, land-based plant, I'm going to choose wheatgrass. We assimilate it a little bit better. 70% chlorophyll has 92 of the 102 minerals in soil. It's powerful. If you are going to drink wheatgrass, here's just a couple of strategies because it's a little hard for some people. Take a sip, squish it around your mouth for 15 to 30 seconds. It's important because your body needs those pre-digestive enzymes to break it down. So when it gets into the stomach and into the digestive system, it can have a much easier time assimilating it. All right, another little thing we'll do is we'll put a little cinnamon on there. It's almost like a tequila shooter. We'll have the wheatgrass, have a little cinnamon or have like a little piece of pineapple after or a little piece of orange, right? It just oh, kills the taste. The so one sip, squish, 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 swallow. Next sip, squish, 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 swallow. Each sip, it's the same thing. You need those enzymes to neutralize and just break it down a little faster. Otherwise, it sits in the stomach, it's heavy. If you're not used to it, you're gonna feel nauseous and probably never wanna do it again. Okay. So just some more information about the alkaline foods and again, when you're alkaline, you fight aging. It literally takes the years. I mean, age is a biological number, but if you want to look younger as you age, you get on these alkaline foods, you'll be amazing. Your skin will glow, literally from the inside out, you're going to start to change. It's incredible. Inflammation can prevent you from losing weight. We talked about that earlier. So again, if you want to lose a little bit of weight, we got to get off the acid. All right, what foods make us more alkaline? So here's a good list, and anyone want, I'm, I'm ripping through this stuff right now because we're short on time but I have all these lists if anyone wants them. These are the good foods, these are the bad foods, and they're kind of counterpart, right? So these are what we're gonna look for. I'm gonna go past it, but anyone who wants this, email me, drdaryl at getoffyouracid.com, D-R-E-A-R-Y-L at getoffyouracid.com, okay? And again, some things you might there, you might be eating, it might be a little bit shocking, but yes, peanuts, by the way, guys. If I'm gonna say one of the most acidic foods on the planet, do not eat peanuts. There are 21 different types of aflatoxin, which is a fungus in peanuts that cause cancer. All right? It's not a good thing. Switch to almonds. All right? Peanut butter is even worse than cocktail peanuts because peanut butter, they take the more, uh, peanut butter, they, they take the more moldy peanuts and they mush it up so you can't see the mold. So peanut butter is even more toxic than cocktail peanuts. So, so, you gotta so raw peanut butter, that's gotta be the most dangerous. I, yeah, absolutely. Scary. Absolutely. All right, so um, you can measure your pH by testing your saliva. Right, we had pH uh, strips upstairs. And again, you want to put it on your tongue for two seconds, take it out, measure for 15 seconds, and look at the reading. Ideally, the pH should be between 7.2 and 7.4. If it's not up there, your body is lacking the absolute buffers that it needs to neutralize the acid, and you've got to increase those. All right, simple ways is by getting on a good green supplement, a mineral supplement. Minerals, I would say, is the fastest way to neutralize the acid, though. Okay? Um, if you look at your urine, again, same thing, between 7.2 and 7.4. If you're at 7.2, you're in good shape. What I recommend you do is do the first morning urine, the first morning saliva, all right? I measure someone's pH like after they did the greens. Of course it's gonna be alkaline, they just had an alkaline drink, all right? But if you do it in the morning, after all those metabolic acids went through your body, you're gonna know exactly what state you're in. But one day is just one day. 
It's looking at the last 24 hours. What you want to do is get a metric. So about 30 days is a good time. You have to do it every day, every few days, and just write them down. And then you look at that line graph and see exactly what the pH is, and then you're going to know where you're staying. You take the average, and then you go from there. Okay? Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. We talked about that. We should be ready. Okay. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. So many good things to talk about. Meditation. Anyone meditate in here? Awesome. Great way to get centered and just to kind of relax the body, relax the mind. Something even just for five minutes, I recommend everyone does at some point. All right. Um, all right, so we're just going to wrap it up because I know um, Clay says we got to go right now. Um, so there's a lot more that we're going to talk about. Tell us about your product. What's that? So tell us about your product. It's not about the product tonight. Oh. Right. But again, um, you, know, you can email me if you have any questions on that. Uh, being alkaline has changed my life. And I know anyone who's done that, I know a few of the audience who've been, who've been doing it. It's not something that happens overnight. So what you got to do is take baby steps, all right? It's not about depriving yourself of the foods that you love. It's about adding these healthy things a little bit by a little bit by And what you'll notice is that as you do that, over time, the good is going to replace the bad. That's how you sustain these things. It takes a little bit of time, but if you really want to get this thing, you want to sustain it, and you want it to be something that's going to last, you got to start to add small healthy things. Right? Don't worry right now about taking away things because in my experience, deprivation is the worst way to do it. People, they get resentful, and after a couple of weeks, they get pissed off and, and they go right back to where they are and they don't want to even try again. So if you just start adding some of these small little things, there's so many more steps that we can go over. Um, but again, you can email me at any point. We launched our new website, www.getoffyouracid.com. Um, it's a really, really cool site. We're going to be having a lot of great education on there. Um, we're going to have like the, the accurate pH charts and you know energy reports and things like that. So you can check out at that for a good resource for your outline information. And um, again, use me as a resource. I wish I had some more time because I had so much information to go through and I ripped through it, so I apologize for that. But um, we'll definitely put on a little bit more of an extensive um, talk about all this so we can go through it slowly and kind of get on the key points. Because at some point I want to talk to you guys about exercise. I want to talk to you about um, different types of things in more detail. Um, about the foods and what you want to do in terms of your plate. There's a certain way that your plate should look like when you're eating, because again, you don't catch a cold, you eat the cold, all right? You are literally what you eat, all right? If we can start to make these small little changes, it's gonna become a cumulative effect over time. That becomes geometric, and you're gonna go from here to here with your health, okay? So I'm here to help you guys any way I can help. You have my email address, you can find me anytime. And um, thank you guys for being here at the expo today. It was an awesome event, all right?